Hi guys, I'm Mike and this is Mike and Biking. And today I'd like to go over five different MTB body protection products. Most of these products I've used pretty extensively for the last at least six months to some of these products I've had for almost two years. So this will be a pretty long-term review of these products. But first, before I go on, I should tell you about the three factors that go into determining what kind of gear I get for myself. The first factor, which is really important to me, is to keep everything budget friendly. Uh, I try to save as much money, I'm sure as many of you do, uh, whenever I can. Uh, the second factor is quality. Now, quality and budget friendliness kind of go back and forth because there's no point of buying something cheaper if it's only going to wear out or rip or tear, you know, if the quality is not good enough, you're going to spend more money in the long run than just buying a better quality one that's a little more expensive in the first place. But I do like to save money and if that means not having the newest tech or the newest gear, I'm okay with that as long as it's proven and it works. So a lot of these products I'm going to show you today have been on the market for some time now. So the third factor for me is sizing. And sizing is very important for me because I'm a very large fellow, above 6'3", pushing above 260 pounds. I've got pretty broad shoulders. So a lot of gear isn't made towards my size kind of person. So when I'm looking for gear, um, I have to know that it's going to be tall enough and big enough to fit me. And that can be especially challenging for me because manufacturers aren't necessarily designing their products geared towards my kind of build. With that being said, let's move on to the first three items on my list, which all come from G-Form. So if you've ever heard of G-Form, you'll know that they like to make their products as lightweight, breathable, and flexible as possible for a more comfortable ride. The pads themselves are made of a malleable, and soft material. It's a special patented uh, technology that comes from G-Form. And what it does is the molecules end up binding together under an impact and hardening. So it's soft and malleable all other times, but when there's a hard impact, it will harden up and protect you. And that's where they're able to make a very comfortable, lightweight, flexible, pad that moves with your body that still gives you some protection. So the first product from Proform I'd like to talk about is the Pro X compression shirt. Right here. The G-Form Pro X compression shirt is something I wear almost every time I go out on a ride. I like having the added protection to my shoulders and at the sides to protect my kidneys if anything ever goes wrong. So partially because of my riding habits and partially because of my broad shoulders, if I go through a tight section, tight turns with a tree on the inside, uh, I have a habit of scraping my shoulder against the tree. And before getting the shirt, I would end up getting quite a few scrapes on just my shoulders. So ever since I got this shirt, that uh, has not happened anymore. It does a pretty good job of protecting there. Um, I like having the added protection uh, if anything ever did go wrong, uh, protecting my kidneys and my chest a little bit. Uh, you know, something is always better than nothing. And the shirt is pretty comfortable. Uh, it's a little tight, but it's made of a very stretchy material that does a really good job of forming around your body. This shirt is an extra large, and that's the largest that they make, but uh, I usually wear a 2X tall shirt, but since this is so stretchy and form-fitting, I don't have a problem fitting into it. And it does a good job of keeping everything in place for me. I've been wearing this for the last two years and I've never had any kind of shaping in any areas. The shirt retails on Proform's website at $99. That's probably how much I spent on it when I bought it and that might seem a little bit steep, but as far as the quality goes, I've been wearing this for every ride that I've gone on for the last two years throw it in the wash after every ride, and I've never had any instance of tears or holes or anything. Uh, the stretchiness is just as strong as the first day I put it on, so it's held up fairly well. 
So I think this was a good purchase and well worth the money I spent on it. The next product I'd like to talk about also comes with Proform and it's the Proform elbow pads. Now I got these at the same time as I got the compression shirt and I've worn them just as often. They're made out of the same material as the shirt is. It's very stretchy, breathable fabric. They're designed to slide up onto your arm like a sleeve and the top has a sticky silicone gripping band to keep the pads in place. The silicone band works pretty well because I've never had it slide out of place on me. These are very light and they breathe very well, but it's very similar to wearing a long sleeve shirt. So keep that in mind if you're thinking about these. The only complaint I may have about these is that the silicone band does feel a bit tight around my upper arm. If you're packing some massive guns, then these may start cutting off your circulation in your arms. The final G-Form product I have to review is the Elite Shin Knee Guard. And I've been less than impressed with these. The design is very similar to the elbow pads as there's a pad on stretchy fabric and a silicone band. Sizing is an issue on this one because I've got some pretty thick thighs and the silicone band is too tight and it cuts into my skin and starts cutting off circulation. On top of that, the pad constantly slides down below my knee and will twist around on my leg. To make things even worse, the pad's a bit chunky on the sides and that results in me brushing up against the top tube of my bike while I'm pedaling, which is pretty annoying. And the worst thing about these pads is that the one time I had an accident, which wasn't even that bad, the entire pad ripped right off the fabric. My wife did her best to try to reattach the pad onto the fabric, but the pad never sat quite right on my leg again. This was pretty disappointing because for the price of these pads, I would expect it to last longer than one crash. After my less than satisfactory experience with the GoForm Elite Shin, knee pads. I decided to go with something that was a little bit tougher, a little bit more bike park worthy. And after a pretty extensive search, I settled on the Race Face Ambush knee pads. Now they've been on the market for a good long time now, but what can I say? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. These knee pads have a larger soft pad in the front, Race Face's version of the soft impact hardening material, and some additional smaller padding on the sides for extra protection. Probably the best part of these pads is that you don't need to remove your shoes to take them on and off. Race Face incorporated a Velcro design so they can be wrapped around the knee and then secured into place with a double Velcro strap. Since these pads are secured by straps at the top and bottom, I've not had them once slide out of place. The best part of this for me is that I don't have a sleeve that I have to pull up around my thick thighs. Now I can just strap it into place so it makes for the most comfortable fit for me. They're designed in a bent knee position, so although they're more comfortable while pedaling, not so much when you're standing up straight or walking. And it is easy to rip the sides of the pads, as you can see here. This is actually from the pegs of my pedals getting stuck into the pad itself. They do warm up a bit quicker, although I haven't had too much of a problem where they were too hot to wear. I've only ever had one good crash while wearing these pads, and I went completely OTB and landed square on the centers of my knees and I didn't feel a thing. I got up and was really impressed that the pads did their job and I didn't even feel hurt. So because of that experience, I feel a lot more confidence when I put these on and do trail riding that my legs are gonna be pretty protected. I picked these pads up on the internet for about $70 which is probably about 45% cheaper than the other competitors in the same category. Race Face just came out with a new version called the Romney. It's a little bit more rugged and actually features a skid plate over the front and the knee, which I wish these had, but I mean, the fabric on the front of the knee is pretty strong and I, I'm not too worried about it being ripped. So the final item I'll be reviewing today is Fox Racing's Titan Sport Jacket. I got this jacket for extra protection when going to bike parks and more rowdy destinations. This is Fox's older version, so it can be found listed for about $100 right now. And it comes in a black or orange, and I opted for the orange version. The jacket has an all right zipper right down the middle of the chest for easy on and off access, and a large Velcro belt that secures the jacket around the torso. 
The mesh is pretty breathable and has held together for me so far. There is sectional hard plastic armor on the shoulders and more armor down the elbow, down to the forearm, and it has a removable spine protector, which could be uncomfortable for some shorter people since it continues down past the waist somewhat. Being taller, I don't have much of an issue of the spine protector going too low. My two biggest gripes with this jacket though is that the Velcro belt doesn't secure well, and it also gets caught up in the mesh constantly. The second is that the elastic straps on the arms never seem to stay very tight. Whenever I wear this, I'm continually pulling them tighter. I always wear a shirt underneath because it feels a bit uncomfortable with just the mesh against your skin. And since I don't want to look like a total Joey at the park, I will wear a long sleeve jersey over it, but that's just my preference. Now, I haven't had any crashes while wearing it, but I do feel a lot of confidence when I do have it on especially with it protecting my spine. Whenever I'm wearing this, I feel like I could be going to war because I just have armor all over my body. Well, that's all that I have for you today, so I guess I'll just leave you with a couple questions. What gear have you had success with and what gear has not held up to your expectations? Let me know in the comments below. I hope this video can help some of you guys spend your money more wisely and especially keep you safer while you're out on the trail. Thanks for watching, and if you do find this video helpful, please subscribe so you can see more. See you around.